Welcome back to another video on the GCSE Physics Paper 2 Topic of Forces. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at distance time graphs. Before we start, remember the top tips for getting the most out of these lessons. Do not have any web pages or windows open that will distract you. Answer all the questions. They will help to make sure you understand the new content. Switch off your phone or at least have it in a different room. It's the biggest distraction you've got. And finally, try to complete the lesson in one session. It will really help you to understand what has been covered. The plan for this lesson, as always, we'll start with some retrieval practice. We know we need to go over previous topics to make sure we don't forget anything. We'll have a look at the new content, which in this lesson is distance time graphs. You'll have some time to embed the key concepts you've learned before it's your chance to have a go and develop your understanding with some practice work. What you're going to need is a mini whiteboard or pen and paper, possibly some revision cards for the retrieval an exercise book or notepad to write down the new content, a mini whiteboard, a pen and paper, or someone who can quiz you for the embedding stage, before finally your exercise book or notepad again for the practice work. Pause this video and get yourself organized. First retrieval slide, pause the video and answer the question on some paper or a mini whiteboard. Here are the answers. Any you couldn't answer or weren't sure about, you should write down on revision cards or in a notebook so you can go back over them later. Pause the video and do that now. Second retrieval slide, pause the video and give these questions a go. Here are the answers. Make sure you pause and write down any you weren't sure about. Final retrieval slide is to help you remember what's been covered in previous forces lessons. Pause and have a go. Again, here are the answers. Pause and write down the ones you struggled with. On to the new content. You'll need an exercise book on notepad so you can write down the questions and answers as they appear on the screen. You'll need these for the embedding part of the lesson later on. Pause and get yourself organised. Now it's time to go through those key concepts that you're going to need to know for distance time graphs. What does the gradient of a distance time graph tell you? The speed. How do you calculate the gradient of a line? The gradient equals the change in the y-axis divided by the change in the x-axis. What does a flat line on a distance time graph tell you? That the object is stationary, so it's not moving. What does a curve on a distance time graph tell you? That the object is changing speed, which means it's accelerating or decelerating. How do you calculate the speed at a certain point when a distance time graph is curved? You draw a tangent at that point, and then you calculate the gradient of the tangent. So now it's your chance to embed those key concepts. You can use the look, cover, write, check method, or get someone to ask you the questions and you can tell them the answers. Pause the video and do this now. Now it's time for you to practice using the concepts we have covered in today's lesson. Pause the video and open up your exercise book or notepad. I've got my questions printed out on a sheet, but you can simply write them into an exercise book and answer them below if you don't want to print out the work. So question one, it says the graph below shows a car journey. How fast was the car traveling between points A, A and B, B, B and C, C, E and F? So what we've got, the graph is a distance time graph, and we know that work, to work out the speed from a distance time graph, we need to work out the gradient between the points we're interested in. So for part A, we need to work out the gradient between A and B. You might have heard the phrase rise over run for working out a gradient. What that means is the rise is the change in Y, so how far up we go, divided by the run, which is the change in X, how far along you go. So for A and B, our rise is the change in Y, which is the difference between here and here. Okay, so I need to work out the difference between that point and that point. So the largest point is 3, so my change in y is going to be 3, take away my lowest point, which is nice and simple, it's 0, so that gives me 3. My run, my change in x, is how far along I go, which is that dif distance there. So that's going to be 5 take away 0 because it starts again at 0 which is nice and simple that's 5 
So my gradient is three divided by five. And if I type that into a calculator, I get 0 0.6. So I need my units and the unit this time, the distance is measured in kilometers and the time is measured in hours. So my speed is going to be 0 0.6 kilometers per hour. So B and C then, so point B, point C, well that's nice and simple because I've got a flat line and we know a flat line on a distance time graph is a speed of zero. The object is stationary, so that's zero kilometers per hour. And then E and F, point E, point F, so my change in Y is the difference between there and there so that is 12 and it goes all the way down to 0 so 12 take away 0 is nice and simple that's 12 and F so my run is that distance there starts at 20 so this is delta X and it goes to 14 so 20 take away 14 is 6 so my gradient is 12 divided by 6, which is, if I need a calculator, that's 2. And let's not forget the units, which are kilometers per hour. Moving on to question number 2 then. It says, the graph below shows the distance a cheetah covers when it is hunting. How fast was the cheetah running at nine seconds? So I don't want an average for an entire part of the journey. I'm looking at a very particular point. So I need to find nine seconds. There's eight and 10, so nine falls in the middle. So I just run my way up. That is nine seconds there. And you can see that that is on a curved part of the graph. So in order to work out the gradient, if it's curved, I need to draw a tangent. So I take my ruler and I'm going to position it so that it is just touching that point. And then I draw a straight line. Doesn't matter how long I draw the line because I just want to work out the gradient along that line. And the longer I draw it, in fact, it's going to make my life a bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick two points which are going to be really, really easy in order to get the numbers for. So this point here crosses some nice, easy numbers. And then let's find another nice, easy point here. OK, so I need to work out my change in Y my rise and divide that by my change in x between those two points so i'm going to draw in my change in y and my change in x so there's my change in y and there's my change in x so let's start with the change in y so this point is 90 and this point down here is so if that's 20, that's 10, so that's 5. So 90 take away 5 is 85. And my change in x is, there's 10. And then at the lowest it is 2. 10 take away 2, that is 8. So my gradient is going to be 85 divided by 8. So I'll just type that into a calculator. And that gives me an answer of 10.625. So my speed to one decimal place is going to be 10.6. And my distance is measured in meters. And my time is seconds. So I have 10.6 meters per second. Now it's time to practice independently the concepts that have been covered in this lesson. Pause the video and work through these questions.
Here are the answers. Pause the video, check your answers and make any corrections. Here are some more independent questions for you. Pause the video and work through these. And again, here are the answers. Pause the video, check your answers and make any corrections. That's all for this lesson. Make sure you go back over all the concepts from this lesson, including the retrieval practice in order to develop your long-term memory. And I will see you next time.